So I was going through some of the comments on my recent videos and I realized that I've actually had an impact on some people buying budget phones or phones that are not flagship level in the year in which they are purchased, like my Amazon Renewed series where I review phones from just a couple of years ago today and buy them renewed from Amazon. People seem to like that. And I realized something pretty quickly. There's a lot of people in my community that don't purchase the top end phone, a lot of them. And there's a ton of comments across my channel from people who just are sometimes even against buying the cutting edge. They do like to watch videos on them, but they don't necessarily buy them for themselves. What's interesting about this is how powerful some of the smaller and less expensive phones that are out there now. Matter of fact, I started thinking, how low can you go and still get really good performance? I went down to $250 and I feel like I got darn near flagship performance. Now we're gonna have to break that down because flagship means several different things to several people and there are some specs that some people might think are or are not flagship. We'll talk about all of that. But uh, I went down to $250 and I feel pretty good about it. And I've actually reviewed these phones before. I'm gonna tell you all about them right after this. This, this is, you know you listen to, to Travis. What up players, welcome back. And for all you new people, welcome. My name is Travis and I do tech videos every single week and have a blast doing them. If that sounds like fun to you, sit back, relax and enjoy the video. Anything I talk about will be in the description below. But for now, let's just get into the video. At the beginning of this year, I talked about how phones at the under $500 price point would really be the new battleground. And I think that that's been very much true, even though we've seen some very expensive phones uh, from Samsung, especially at the beginning of this year, we've also seen some pretty inexpensive phones come from Apple and some other manufacturers. And I think it's just come to the point where a lot of phones just don't need to be as expensive as they are. And as a matter of fact, I started to drill down in my head exactly what does it mean to be a flagship. Now, let's not be pedantic in this. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't want your definition that you can find on dictionary.com. I legitimately want to know from a usability standpoint, what really is a flagship phone? What do you expect from it? I'm going to make some large assumptions here, and I think I'm going to be pretty accurate on most of the things I'm going to say in this video. But if you have your own comments as to what you think a flagship level phone should be, Put them in the comments below. We'll talk about it down there. I think we'll have a lively discussion. Because as far as I'm concerned, you really don't need to spend $1,000 to get flagship level performance. And I've already done this with the Amazon Renewed series of videos I've done here on this channel. If you've never seen those, you should definitely check them out. Uh, I'll leave a link down in the description or something. But beyond that, what's really important about this is that even now on a brand new phone that's under $300, you can get some very flagship level performance. And I've actually reviewed both of these phones, which I will be talking about in this video. Now, to be clear, even though I've reviewed both of these phones, both $250 or less, there are a bunch of phones with similar specs that are gonna be able to do everything I'm talking about in today's video. So it doesn't really matter if you buy this phone or this phone, even though I'll leave links in the description to not only buy these, but also to watch my full and reviews. What's important is how powerful the chipsets are and the type of features you can get right now for under $300. I've done videos about the under $500 series of phones, which you can find in a link probably at the end of this video, but under 300 is still incredibly compelling. It wasn't that long ago that you would buy an under $300 phone and you got exactly what you paid for, trash. But now there are amazing specs and some of these phones can do some things that absolutely blow my mind. As a matter of fact, just over $300, you can get a phone with a 90 Hertz refresh rate. That sounds pretty, flagship level, and there's OLED screens at just over $300, and there's even Snapdragon 865 phones with OLED displays at under $500. So you can get the legitimate flagship level that you're thinking about, because I think most people are thinking processor and maybe RAM and some other things, but I think when you really dig down into it, there's some things you could probably let go and still call it a flagship. Enter the TCL 10L and the Redmi Note 9S. Now I've reviewed both of these phones on the channel and they both perform really well. They look great and have some great specs. Now I'm actually gonna perform most of my tests here on the Note 9S because it's got a slightly better processor than this. However, I can tell you that pretty much everything you're gonna see with this phone works on this phone as well. And I actually do like the TCL phone mainly because TCLs really put some extra time into the screen on this thing and some of the extra features that are in here, including the ability to like go out to four Bluetooth devices at once. That's, that's pretty cool. You can have a party with one phone. And some other cool things. Um, I think this phone really is incredibly underrated. I just saw it on sale today for $211. 
Highly recommended. I recommend it so much, I actually bought one for my dad. Like, that's how much I believe in this particular phone. TCL knocked it out of the park. But I really do want to talk a little bit more about this Redmi Note 9S. This thing has the um, Snapdragon 720G processor, which I didn't really know a lot about. And then when I did some research on it, I was very, very impressed. Now, this only has four gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of ROM, which definitely does not feel very flagship. But the reality is, is how much RAM do you actually need and how much do you actually use? The operating system itself will take care of any RAM management that it needs to. So unless you've got a bunch of apps open that you wanna go back and forth between a lot, you're probably not gonna notice that difference. And you know that Windows 10 can run on four gigs of RAM, right? Like a full on desktop operating system. I mean, it's not gonna work like stupendously well, but it will work. So to think that a mobile operating system needs more than four gigs of RAM is just ridiculous. It's just not true. This thing works just fine. It's absolutely fluid, it's fast. But the 720 processor, 720G processor has a couple of tricks up its sleeve. It can film in 4K 30 frames a second. It's got the ability to do HDR content, like HDR content on a $250 phone. That's kind of crazy. And you might be surprised at the performance of this thing. Now, typically what happens with these lower end phones, you usually get a crappy camera. And that's typically what keeps people from buying phones like this, especially with cameras being so absolutely valued in today's world. Social media is full of photos and you definitely wanna be there for your viral moment when you take out your camera. You wanna make sure you can see everything just good. And a lot of times people don't trust the cameras on these phones. Well, again, I'm gonna tell you how to fix that. That's super simple. So my next thought was, well, what actually is a flagship? Like what makes it a flagship? Software for sure, some of the cool things you can do on Samsung phones help with that. But you know, if you know your way around XDA, you can put almost any type of operating system on these phones and make it a completely new phone. But the thing is, the operating systems that most of these phones are shipping with are absolutely excellent. And the features they give you are really great, but I will say this, no AMOLED display and no wireless charge. Let's just move that out of the way. Although you can add wireless charge for really inexpensive without opening this thing up. I made a video about that a long time ago, super cheap, it's like 15 bucks. It just plugs into the USB-C on the bottom and you're off to the races. So what else makes a flagship phone? I think most people are going to say the processor because the processor handles so much. It handles the ability to game, to shoot videos, and of course do all that cool processing of the photos. And while I've mentioned this before on other videos, there is a solution to this for lower end phones, and that is Gcam. I'll leave a link about Gcam in the description below because I have a lot of questions about that. <clears throat> but if you put Gcam on this, this quickly becomes a flagship level phone, seriously. As I said, most people's reservations are the cameras on all of these phones. But as you can see here, even without Gcam, this takes absolutely serviceable pictures. But as soon as you put Gcam on, this thing becomes a beast. The video quality is already really good on this thing. And unfortunately, if you use Gcam, you lose the uh, stabilization. But if we go back to the original video, it looks fine anyway. So you can take great videos with this thing up to 4K 30. The photos with Gcam are just crazy. So now you're just thinking, okay, it must be performance in the operating system? Nah, bro, like even the lower processor 10L it just zips through everything. Like there's nothing slow about that phone. So it's obviously gaming. Now in the case of the Redmi, this is actually a 2020 processor. It may be a mid-level processor, but it's from 2020. Gaming is no problem. And the funny thing is, is before I really dug into this, I thought, well, you know, all those games run on pretty much all Android phones anyway, so where's the problem? And I think some people have the misconception that you have to turn down settings to get them to work. Well, that's not true. I ran Call of Duty on the Note 9S with full textures, full resolution, full everything, and got a silky smooth 60 out of it. Now you're not gonna be able to see here because the capture is gonna capture in 30 and you're watching this video in 30, but trust me when I tell you, not a narrow skip frame as I was kicking everyone's booty. And it's kind of the same deal with any of these phones around this price range. Even something like PUBG, full resolution, full everything, still just cuts through it like a hot knife through butter. So then some of you might be saying, well, it must be the screen, the AMOLED screen, right? Listen, in a vacuum, when you look at these things not next to an AMOLED screen, they look great. And as a matter of fact, both these phones support HDR content. If you watch YouTube or Netflix in HDR 
on these phones, I guarantee you will have no complaints about the screen. Absolutely guaranteed. The reality is we've been told that you need to get a new flagship year after year, but a lot of people are starting to figure out that's not the case at all. As a matter of fact, I think that's why my Amazon Renewed series is so popular because you can get something like a Snapdragon 855 processor uh, phone now for really cheap, like $400 in some cases. And that phone's gonna last for a whole heck of a long time and is more powerful than this. This is what kills me. $200 and $300 phones are absolutely beast mode and in some places are basically their versions of flagships. Here in America, we like to look at the latest and greatest as the Supreme, but I start to wonder how much of that processing power is actually wasted. Because these phones are on Snapdragon processors, they get access to technology that helps battery life as well. So it's not about getting poor battery life with these less expensive phones. In some instances, you get better battery life. So again, what is that processing power being used for? Yes, these are not 5G phones, but 5G middle of the line processors are coming out. And by next year, you'll be able to get a 5G phone that's stupid cheap. And at that point, what's the point of a real flagship? Yeah, there'll be some extra cool specs. You won't have to download or sideload Gcam, I get it. But if you're willing to save $700, what are you really missing out on? In my testing of these phones, I can honestly say nothing, zero. Zip, zilch. And again, I bought my dad the 10L because I knew it would be a problem-free phone with great performance and he absolutely loves it. Of course, he is definitely the average consumer and it beat the poop out of whatever phone he had before that. So he thinks it's a flagship. When he got it and he called me, he told me how amazing this phone was, this $250 phone. He actually thought this thing cost hundreds and hundreds of dollars and wanted to pay me back. I never told him how much it was, but I was amazed at how expensive he thought it was because it's quality. So on the Android side of things, there's so many options, so many options for inexpensive, incredibly performing smartphones. Now I've actually gone on Amazon, seen phones that I just can't believe. Phones with pop-up cameras for $300, 90 hertz screens for just over $300, Snapdragon 865 processors for just over $400. It's nuts. The narrative being pushed by Samsung and even now OnePlus with this, uh, the OnePlus 8 Pro that you have to spend $1,000 to get flagship performance is absolutely ridiculous. I wouldn't mind seeing a company come out a year after using the previous year's processors as their new phones. Now you can use these mid-range processors which basically do everything you need anyway, but I would just like to see someone come up from behind and just use some of the slightly older processors and come in and just wipe the floor with these guys. The reality is this, the distance between high level performance and mid level performance is smaller than it's ever been before. And even high level performance and very low level performance. Now you might go to a benchmark and see that the Snapdragon even 855 doubles the 720G. But when you're playing a game and it's pretty much capped at 60 frames a second and it doesn't go any faster and you have the highest settings, what are we talking about here? I personally don't get it. I'd love to hear what you guys and gals think in the comments below. Is there really any reason to spend $1,000 or more on a smartphone? Now, don't get me wrong. There are some really great types of smartphones coming out here really soon. The new Note's coming out, which I'm not terribly excited about, but the Fold 2's coming out. Now, in my opinion, it's probably worth spending a little extra money on that type of technology. Having said that, the performance is not gonna be much better than this. Like, sure, the high refresh rate's gonna be nice and the folding thing, I'm really kind of looking forward to that. But look, I did a review on both of these phones, the 10L and of course the Redmi. Make sure you check them out and everything else is in the description. See you next time. Peace and love. Peace.